and welcome to part six of our series, Walking with Jesus Through Coronavirus. We're on a journey through Mark's Gospel. Our world is in crisis and it seems now more than ever what we need is not merely talk but action. And we're seeing it around the world. Brave action, sacrifice on behalf of others. And yet also we're talking more than ever, online and on the phone at least. I wonder whether you know how many hours of footage are uploaded onto YouTube every minute. It's actually 500 hours worth per minute on average. So if you were to watch everything that's uploaded in a day, it would take you 82 years non-stop. Well, that's a lot of talk. What does it achieve? And yet when Jesus walked this earth 2,000 years ago, and as we've seen in Mark's Gospel, he came as the King God promised, he came to defeat suffering and death and evil, he came to bring us back to God. Well, one of his main weapons in the fight was his words. Yes, there was action, but he used powerful words in that action. And we see that in our next reading, which is Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him, and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. The power of words often depends on the person speaking them. So, ten years ago I was working in the office of a cabinet minister in the UK Treasury and in that office we had all of our phones on a loop system so that we could listen in to each other's phone calls. You understand so that uh, notes could be taken of important meetings. Well it was always very exciting when it was the Prime Minister on the other end of the line. When it's the PM speaking all of us wanted to pick up the phone, carefully put it on mute and listen in. What struck me about listening to the Prime Minister was that he never needed to raise his voice, certainly when talking to his subordinates, his cabinet colleagues. He never needed to shout, that's for sure. This is the PM speaking. Whatever he says goes, and we diligently noted everything down and made sure it was acted on exactly. The words of powerful people carry their power, and it's like that with Jesus. In the town of Capernaum, Jesus started teaching in the synagogue and, as we read in verse 22, they were astonished at his teaching for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. You see, Jesus' words not only tell us how this world needs to be fixed, they also have the power to do something about it. As we go through Mark's Gospel, we're going to see the power of Jesus' words demonstrated for all to see. Power over sickness, power over nature, power over death. And here Jesus even shows his power in the spirit world. Many people today think the spirit world is probably just all in people's heads, but it doesn't really exist. Lots of Christians have said to me, perhaps in ancient times, the thought of demon possession was really what we would today understand as a kind of psychological condition. But that's not how Jesus sees evil spirits. Jesus is clear that there is such a thing as a spiritual realm, even if it hides itself from us most of the time, and that the real evil spiritual powers are in some way behind a lot of the bad things in this world. Even in this short passage, the evil spirit recognises Jesus as being the Holy One of God and says, have you come to destroy us? So this spirit actually understands far more about who Jesus is 
than any human being in the scene at that moment. This spiritual power has supernatural insight. It recognises Jesus the King who's come to defeat evil. It's asking whether Jesus is going to destroy evil then and there all in one go. Well no, as we'll see, Jesus has come to rescue people first and then the wipeout of all evil will come later. One thing's for sure, God is all powerful over evil. And if we're taking refuge in Jesus, we have nothing to fear. And Jesus demonstrates the power of God here. He hasn't just come to talk about evil spiritual powers or the problems of this world. He's come to set people free from the grip of evil. And that's what he does for this man. With his powerful words, he commands the spirit to leave the man. And the spirit does. And the man is set free. The people who witnessed this were amazed at the power of Jesus' words. Verse 27, what is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even unclean spirits and they obey him. Jesus is the rescuing king and he uses his words to set us free. What does this mean for us today? Well, do you know the power of Jesus' word? in your own life. If you do, you'll know what I'm talking about. As we listen to his word in the Bible and trust that word, God works in our lives to change us, to highlight and set us free from the things that hold us back from following him, and to show us more of the wonderful freedom of belonging to Jesus. That's my hope for this series in Mark's Gospel, that as we take in God's word bit by bit, God will work in us to change us. These are not merely words. These words have spiritual power enabled by God's Holy Spirit to set us free and to give us hope in what is ultimately otherwise a hopeless world. These words bring us into God's kingdom and so they bring us close to God. Let's ask God to do that for us as we pray. Lord God, we thank you that you are there. We thank you that you turned up in person, in the person of Jesus, to show us who you are. Thank you that you have the power to save us from anything. Please have mercy on us and on your world in this crisis. Please help us in all the different ways we're struggling at the moment. Most of all, Lord God, please turn our eyes and the eyes of people around us and around the world to Jesus. And may we know true freedom through him. May we find that in his powerful word. And we ask in his name. Amen. That's all for today. See you next time. Teach me.